Hello, I'm happy to welcome a very special guest, Queenie V, to you today. Uh, Queenie is an experienced social worker with 13 years of experience in children's services. Not only that, but she's an, also an aspiring manager and holds the position of senior practitioner. When required, she steps up to team manager within a local authority. Queenie is also a popular YouTuber. Her channel is Queenie V Community, and it's a vibrant space where she shares her experience and insights. As if that were not enough, she's also a dedicated practice educator. I'm excited to speak to her today. Hi, Queenie V. Great to have you with me today. I know you're coming from a children's perspective, and I'm an adult social worker, so it's great to have you here to bring your expertise. Today, we're going to talk a bit about assessment in children's services. So could you let me know a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you, Kaylee, for having me on your channel. And I want to say hello to the people who have been watching your videos and subscribe to your YouTube channel. Yeah, I work within the children's services and I've done social work for 13 years. So I'm here to share ideas with people, especially the newly qualified students and people who want to join social work profession. Yeah, so yeah, within the children's services, there are so many assessments that you come across when you come into working within children's services here in the UK. But then I'm going to focus on child and family assessment because within the child and family assessment, when you come into children's services, definitely you will get to know about child and family assessment. And when you talk about child and family assessment, it's about identifying risk, mm -hmm. identifying concerns, the worries within the family. Mm -hmm. Because in social work, we are here to provide a good outcome for children and young people within working with, living within the context of the family home. So when a referral is received, you need to do an assessment because with the assessment, you'll be able to identify what are the worries. So basically the child and family assessment is to do, carry out an assessment to identify so, what kind of support the family will need. What kind of intervention do you have to put in place to provide a good outcome, a positive outcome for the children and the young people that have come into your attention? Yeah, and child and family assessment is bread and butter within children's services, especially okay. within the child protection team. Within okay. the frontline child protection team, you have to do an assessment. And one of it is child and family assessment. And okay. you are doing child and family assessment, why? Are you doing child and family assessment? Because a child has come to the attention of children's services mm -hmm. and you have to intervene. You need to do an assessment to find out why the child, a referral has been received. And the focus is to be able to provide the right support and services to the family. So within the child and family assessment, they are key element to it. And I really want to focus on the assessment triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, within the child and family assessment, every assessment that you do within children's services, you need to understand the assessment triangle. And there are three elements within the assessment triangle. Mm -hmm. We have the child developmental needs, we have the parental capacity, and we have the family and environmental factors. Okay. So anytime you are doing a child and family assessment, you need to link it up with the assessment triangle is the bread and butter of the whole okay. do. Because as a social worker, your, your aim is to identify the developmental needs of the children that you are working with. You need to also identify and assess the parental capacity mm -hmm. of the caregiver. Mm -hmm. And also you need to take into consideration the family and environmental factors within the context where the child is living. Okay, and as part of gathering that information, where do you look? So in terms of gathering those information, I will talk about another core important role that you do as a social worker when you're doing assessment. Part of gathering information is about the voice of the child. Mm -hmm. It's so important. You are not going to do any good quality assessment without taking into consideration the wishes and the feeling of the child. Yeah. The yeah. child will need to sit at the center of everything that you do. Mm -hmm. The child will need to be the focus of your assessment. 
And also, like you asked the question, partnership working is very important. Yeah. It's key work. Any assessment that you do within the child and family assessment, you need to work in partnership with the family. You are there to support the family. You are there to support the children. So if you work in isolation of the family, then who are you supporting? Mm -hmm. So it, it's very good. It's good practice to work with the family. And also I will talk about multi-agency working. Yeah. In social work, you cannot work alone. Mm -hmm. You cannot do everything alone. You cannot protect a child alone. So that's what the government has emphasized. They need to work in, in multi-agency working. Yeah. So within the context of the family, perhaps the child is at risk of sexual exploitation. Mm -hmm. So who would you work with? Perhaps you work with the police, we work with the CAMS team, we work with hosts of professionals. If a child, there's issues about attendance at school behavior issues, then you work with the school, we work with mentors, we work with health visitors, nurses. There's so many professionals that you can work with in terms of protection children, in terms of safeguarding children, in yeah. terms of providing the right support to meet the needs of the children that are known within the local authority really okay um queenie v can you talk more about the child developmental needs aspect of the assessment okay thank you kaylee so we like i said the assessment triangle is very important when you are assessing children and young people within the context of their family home so the child developmental needs have got elements to it we have the health education emotional and behavior needs of the child family and social relationship, social presentation of the child, self-care skills of the child. So any assessment that you do within the, ch the child and family assessment, you need to take into consideration, is this child being healthy at home? Is the child registered with a GP? When the child is not well, does mom able to take this child to the GP to seek support? For this child medical support for this child yes yeah, so that is part of your assessment education is this child achieving at school mm -hmm. attendance is it good that's why when you are doing assessment you link up with the teachers yeah if the yeah. young person is at college you link up with the tutors at college to find out is this child achieving the level that the child needs to achieve so education is very important because we want children to thrive. We want children yeah. to do well. That mm -hmm. is the, the bread and butter of children's services. So you talk about emotional and behavior needs of a child. So within the child and family assessment and within the child, the assessment triangle, yeah. you need to also think about the behavior needs. Is this child behavior a concern at school? Is this child being disruptive at school? Is the parents able to manage the behavior needs of this child? Is the parents able to manage the mental health needs of this child? What can we do to help this child within the contents of the family? Perhaps maybe a referral to CAMS. Yeah. Perhaps a referral to clinician, a referral to therapy can help the child deal with some of the emotions that the child is going through. Or maybe even one-to-one -one support mm -hmm. can be given to the child. So when you are doing assessment, you need to think outside of the box. Yeah. What can we do to help this child in the content? So you are asked, you have to ask your quest, you have to ask yourself these questions when mm -hmm. you are doing assessment. So in terms of social presentation, how is this child presenting? Yeah. Is this child feeling shy, feeling intimidated, mm -hmm. lack of confidence? So if there's lack of confidence and feeling shy, what is underlining issue here is this child emotional health being promoted at, at home mm -hmm. some children yeah they are kicked out they can't even contribute to decision making at home they cannot even thrive at home they are not happy at home and they go to school and you can see that the, the uh their social presentation can tell you that they are not they are not happy at home mm -hmm. so these are some questions that you can ask yourself and yeah. work with other professionals to help to unpick those issues so you can provide the right support to the child and also we talk about self-care 
at a certain age, a child needs to be able to at least do something. So as a, a parent, you need to be able to help your child, isn't it, whilst they are growing. At the age of six, eight, maybe a child can be able to at least brush his teeth to go to school. Some mm -hmm. parents, they go to school, the children go to school very, very unkept. Yeah. Their clothes, are, their clothes are very dirty, extremely dirty, smelly. Maybe parents have taken drugs throughout the whole night, can't be bothered to wake up to help the child to dress up, to go to school. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a concern. So maybe a referral, a teacher will do a referral to children's services because there's so many emerging issues coming up for this child. Then we have to do the child and family assessment. And these mm -hmm. are some of the questions that okay. social yeah. workers in the children's services will do to be able to help the family. So, so I'll talk we've... about... Oh no, I was just going to mention, so so you've said about sort of the presentation of uh, the child um, and I suppose it's also the environment in the home. So a lot of these assessments are done in the home environment, I presume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You go home and do the assessment. And like I said, you talk to the parent, you talk mm -hmm. to extended family members as well. Yeah. So it's a holistic assessment. Mm -hmm. Child and family assessment is very holistic. Yeah. You don't take one side. You don't just talk to the school and they say, oh, mom is no good. Mom is not taking the child to school on time. Mom is not attending parents' evening. No. Talk to other family members. Why is mom not able to take this child to school on time? Yeah. Is yeah. there anything happening? Maybe mom is experiencing domestic violence, being beaten at home, and cannot ex exert himself and protect herself. And now she's also feeling low. So you can put support in place to help mom, build mom's confidence up. So that's why I will talk about the parental capacity. Yeah. So when you're doing assessment, you need to also think about the parental capacity mm -hmm. within the family home. So ensuring safety, yeah. basic care, emotional warmth, stimulation, guidance and boundaries, stability is very important. Yeah. Every child that is living at home needs stability need basic care, need nurturing, love. It's parents need to give, it's good enough mm -hmm. parenting, it's more social services we request, children's services we're requesting for family. I'm not the best parent <laughs> in the world, you know what I mean? But at least I try my best. Yeah. So that good enough parenting is what we want. So providing stability for your child. Yeah. When a child does something, you know, the way you talk to the child, the way you punish a child, we should do it in an acceptable way. Yeah. Think your, as your, you as a child, what do, would you want to be treated as a child? Then you yeah. do the same thing to your children. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, it, that's it. Like, none of us are perfect. I'm, I'm a parent too. And it's yeah. like, you, you feel like all the time you could look at those things. But yeah, it, it, it's around sort of like warmth and love and looking out for those human factors, isn't it? And, and all of those things as well. It's not just it's so far away from just like a checkbox exercise because this is about mm. people's lives and there's so many things that we need to look at and I think you've really got it across about how it is so holistic so I think that's been a really helpful overview. Yeah, yeah. I want to also talk about the family environmental factors when you do yeah. the assessment you need to think about the family history and functioning mm -hmm. how is this family functioning perhaps parents are taking drugs yeah unfortunately they are not taking any action to address the, the drug use. And that is how they are functioning at home and it can impact on their safety and the welfare, the emotional health, the mental health of the child living in the context of the family home. We talk about domestic violence, DV. Maybe children are witnessing domestic violence. I'm not saying don't have arguments with your partner or your spouse, we all do occasionally, but not to the extent that it will affect the emotional needs of your child. They, it will affect their mental health needs. The child yeah. needs to do coursework or maybe do co homework, but parents are arguing throughout the whole night and the mm -hmm. child couldn't sleep. And they go to school. Sometimes they go and report to the teachers that my mom and dad have been arguing the whole night and they go to school very sleepy and very cryy. And yeah. Very, yeah, so then maybe the school will step, will step in and try to work with the family. But if the concerns are very high, then they will refer the concerns to the children's services and we step in and do the child and family assessment. Mm -hmm. So I talk about the 
family and environmental factors, including housing, the environment where the child is living, is it appropriate? Mm-hmm. Is, is the parents sharing bedroom? Maybe at a certain age, a child needs to have their own bedroom. They cannot share bedroom with parents. Mm-hmm. Is this happening at the family home? So we take into consideration housing issues as well. Income. If the family are not working, are they able to claim benefit? So yeah. social workers, they come in and they help you. Some parents, unfortunately, doesn't know the system. So they will help you and guide you as to how you can claim benefits. So part of your assessment is signposting family as well. It's not just coming to tell parents this is what you are doing wrong, but signposting family and providing the right support and services. I know a number of children's services, social work who step in, perhaps for Black communities, somebody who has come in and does not have benefit, cannot claim benefits, not eligible to claim benefit. And there's a team within the children's services called no recourse to public funds. Yeah. So they can support the, the family because there's a child living at home. And they can support the family as much as possible with little money they can to help the family until the home office are able to regularize their stay here. Mm-hmm. And I know we link ourselves up with housing as well. So yeah. if there's around homelessness, then housing can step in and help the family. So we provide a number of support for family because we want to minimize exploitation for children. Mm -hmm. We want to minimize vulnerability for children. So children's services, our remit is not to take children away, but to support the family as much as possible. And how do we do that? By doing child and family assessment and taking into consideration the health needs of the child the educational needs of the child, the family environmental factor, and what else can we do? And then we put a safety plan in place yeah. to protect the child within the family home. That's really good. Yeah, really helpful. Thank you. So, Kelly, I want to talk about good practice as well to your subscribers and the mm-hmm. viewers. Mm-hmm. That good practice is very important in any assessment that you do with the family. So, anti oppressive practice anti-discriminatory practice is very important. Any assessment that you do, you need to go in with an open mind approach. Not saying perhaps, oh, this family are from the black ethnic minority, so they are beating their children up. So you go in and you don't talk to the family, you don't understand their culture, their issues, Mm -hmm. what is going on, and you jump into conclusion and you just conclude your assessment. That is oppressive. That is Mm -hmm. not working with the family. So yeah. we need to not stigmatize, not making judgment, not labeling. The language that we use when we are doing assessment we should be very sensitive to the mm-hmm. needs of the children, to the needs of the family as well. Because once you complete the assessment, you're going to give it to the family to read mm-hmm. and try your best when you come into children's service. I know students will be watching us and maybe those who are new. Try your best to use words that are very friendly. Obviously, you need to highlight the concerns. You need to highlight what you are worried about and you need to put a safety plan in place. But definitely put arm yourself with anti-oppressive practice and anti-discriminatory practice as well. Yeah, brilliant. So that's really something that you learn about at university, but it's definitely very practical as well and is essential for good quality assessments and that are empowering as well. So yeah, a really good closing point, I think. Thank you so much for your input on this. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Kay. It's great to have you. <laughs>